Although the Rugby World Cup is underway and the focus is all on that, another competition is starting this weekend with the Pro 14 kicking off once again. Last season it was Leinster who were champions, but this season who will lift the trophy in the Cardiff City Stadium in June 2020. Today we're going to have a preview of Conference A, give our thoughts on all the teams and our predictions as well. So make sure to get involved in the comments down below, leave a like on the video and subscribe for more. Let's start with the Dragons. So starting with the Dragons first, last season they finished sixth out of seven sides in Conference B, but this season they are clearly in Conference A. So what can we expect this season? I asked a lot of Dragons fans and I wanted to get their opinion and really the big thing that came out of the, the talks I had with Dragons fans was they wanted to make Rodney Parade their home ground a fortress where they can get teams who maybe are at the same level of them or slightly even better and give them a good game at Rodney Parade ensuring that they can pick up points at home because away we know they struggle away their stats away from home are not great and if they want to get some points and possibly even push for the playoffs then they need to be getting those wins at home. The director of rugby is Dean Ryan. He's had experience at so many different clubs, such as Bristol Bears, Worcester. He did spend time at Newport Gwent Dragons while they were called that back in 2012 as uh, just helping out, doing a few things around the club. He's also been an analyst on Sky Sports for the rugby, so he's done a lot for rugby and over his career now. It seems like a good move and a good move in the right direction. Of course, last season, Bernard Jackman was in charge, but was sacked at the end of the season. The key player for the Dragons has got to be Corey Hill. Now, Corey Hill, I think, is one of the most underrated players for Wales. He's gone to the Rugby World Cup with Wales, although there's some injury concern about him. But it says something that Gatland has decided to pick him, although he's injured and probably won't be available for the first two games or so. The rising star for me has got to be Leon Brown. Now, he's played quite a lot for the Dragons and has played a few times for Wales, but wasn't put in their World Cup squad. But he has six caps for Wales so far, and young, exciting prop coming through. And this season could really see him cement his place in the Dragons side and also really push the players for Wales. Players such as Rob Evans weren't taken to the Rugby World Cup, or Samson Lee. Does that open the door for Leon Brown when Wales get back from the Rugby World Cup? So what are my predictions for the Dragons? Well, I'm afraid, Dragons fans, I don't see you making the playoffs. You might get a position higher than last season, but I think you're going to be around about the same place. I think the t other teams in this conference are just a little bit too strong, but it's exciting to see how the likes of Sam Davis is going to get on this season. Let's move on now to Leinster. Next up is last season's champions, it is Leinster. What a side they've been in the Pro 14 over the past couple of years. As I said, last season finished champions and I think the expectation as I was talking to Leinster fans is the same thing. They want to be champions again, but also go for it in Europe. But we are focusing on the Pro 14, on the domestic side, first of all. The key player for them is going to be Johnny Sexton. Gone to the Rugby World Cup, so he will be missed, but an opportunity for other players to step in. Johnny Sexton, for me, is one of the best players in World Rugby, taking the ball to the line and releasing it just at the right time to free up chances for other players. The rising star is a really exciting player going by the name of Kylan Doris. I think I pronounced that right. I hope I have. But the former Blackrock College number eight is already creating a storm. Doris's power and running has put him next in an impressive line of number eight in the Leinster production. He started all five games during the 2017 Under-26 Nations when playing a year young at that age level and featured the 2017 Under-20s World Championships in Georgia for Ireland, of course. Now, he got his first cap, his first game sorry, for Leinster in May 2018 against Connacht in the Pro 14, and then he was upgraded from the academy squad up to the senior squad for the 2018-19 season. And he's also been named captain of the Ireland under-20 side. So he's a really exciting player. Really excited to see how he'll do this season. With players going to the Rugby World Cup, hopefully he'll get more of an opportunity to play this season. So what do I think Leinster will do this season? Well, they've got to be going for it again to win it. That's got to be the aim. And I'm sure they'll be there or thereabouts come the end of the season. 100% getting in the playoffs. 
but how will they do? Let me know in the comments, guys, down below. Who do you think will finish in the playoffs? But how are Leinster going to do if you're a Leinster fan? So I'm going to try not to be biased here, but Ospreys are on my side. They're the team I support, and I obviously want to see them do well. But I'm not going to do any ridiculous predictions. So last season, the Ospreys finished fourth in uh, the Pro 14. And this season, as an Ospreys fan and chatting to the Ospreys fans, we have got to be going for them playoffs after a pretty underwhelming few years, to say at the least. The key player for me has got to be... Gareth Anscombe. Gareth Anscombe, yes, is out with injury and looking likely till about November, December time. But for me, if he was in the Wales team now and fit, I would be much more confident about Wales' chances at this year's Rugby World Cup. He's shown when there's faith put in him that he can make a true difference. Whereas Gatlin has put faith in him, given him opportunity to play at 10, we've seen how we can play and how we can be up there with the very best in the world. We will certainly miss him at the World Cup and the Ospreys will miss him at the start of the season. His goal kicking has come on leaps and bounds and to take him off a direct rival, I think, is a huge cue for the Ospreys. The rising star for me has got to be Keelan Giles. Now, Keelan Giles is quite a frustrating story for him. He's played for Wales in the 20s and shone for us, but then he's had so many injuries over the years. And he has really gone under the radar, I feel, over the past two years. Not that many people really chatting about it. If he can replicate his form of 2016-17 season with 14 tries in 19 appearances for the Ospreys, which is an incredible record, then maybe he'll give Wayne Pivak something to think about when he takes the job later on after the Rugby World Cup. So one of my predictions for the Ospreys, well, I think we are going to get playoffs. I think we've made some good little signings. We are strong in the pack. We've got Captain Fantastic and Alan Wynne-Jones. We've got strength across the whole pitch. Dan Evans at fullback, I think he's super underrated. And if we didn't have the likes of Halfpenny, Liam Williams, then I think he would be in contention to be playing for Wales. But a really exciting season ahead of us for the Ospreys. But how are they going to do, guys? Let me know in the comments down below. It's now time to move on to that shirt up there is Ulster. So the next team is Ulster. Ulster are the team in focus. Head coach Dan McFarland has been there for just over two years-ish now after being assistant coach at Scotland and with the Glasgow Warriors as well. What can we expect from Ulster today and for the rest of the season? Well, the key player for me is going to be John Cooney, a really exciting scrum half who loves to be on the support line of the attacker to get those tries. Named in the Dream Team for last season, had a fantastic season last season, but he is not on the plane to Japan with Ireland this year for the Rugby World Cup, which is a bit of a strange decision for me, but he's not going to be heading over to Japan. Last season, they finished second in Conference B, which is pretty impressive. And this season feels like this could be the season that they really push on. Their rising star has got to be Robert Balcune. I think I said that right. He's a fantastic winger, really handy at sevens rugby. He was called up to the Island Men's Seven squad for the World Cup in San Francisco back in May. And he's helped the side win the Challenge Trophy to finish ninth overall at the tournament. But he's been given his chance at 15s now for Ulster. So this season, where do I think they're going to finish? I think they're going to get in the playoffs pretty comfortably. The likes of Jacob Stockdale um, will be coming back from the Rugby World Cup, hopefully after having a fantastic tournament for the Irish. He will come back and hopefully he'll be able to have quite a big influence on the side. They've got some great players all over the park. Captain Ian Henderson is a great player as well when he's fit. So if Ulster can get things right like they did last season, there's no reason why they can't challenge the big boys like Leinster, like Glasgow... Can they do it though? Let me know in the comments down below, Ulster fans. How are you going to do this season? It's now time to move on to the Scottish side. It's Glasgow Warriors. How do we rate their chances this season? Last season felt like the big chance. In the final against Leinster, Stuart Hogg is still there. But unfortunately, they couldn't quite do it. Going down quite early... But then coming back and showing what they've been doing all season. We know the style of rugby that they like to play. They're really attacking minded and they love to throw the ball about. Talking of Hogg, he has now gone to Exeter Chiefs and so he ain't there anymore. So last season, as I said, they lost in the final but really were the form team throughout the season for me. The key player for me this season is going to be Hugh Jones. And why do I say that? Well, because he has a point to prove. Last season, 
he didn't play particularly well and therefore wasn't picked for Scotland at Rugby World Cup 2019. He'll be able to start the Pro 14 season with a point to prove and he'll be a senior player in this side. He came onto the scene and he was just so good when he came onto the scene with Stormers and then when he came over to Glasgow and with his Scotland career when it began. We want to see him replicate that form once again. The rising star for me is a youngster called Robbie Nairn. Robbie Nairn, he made his debut for Glasgow Warriors against the Southern Kings back in September 2018 after signing his first professional contract with the Warriors in summer of 2018. He's been previously part of the Foster Rock Scottish Rugby Academy. His first two tries came for the club against Connacht in, back in February this year. The wingers represented his country at two World Rugby Under-20 Championships following up his appearance at the 2015 tournament with selection for the 2017 edition. So a really young and exciting Scottish player coming through there. So it's really exciting. How will Glasgow do this season? I think they'll get in the playoffs again. And I do think the loss of Hogg, I think he's such a world-class fullback, probably the top five in the world. So you're probably going to miss him a little bit. But I think they'll have enough to certainly get in the playoffs and who knows from there onwards. So next up is the Cheetahs, the South African side who joined a few years ago with the Pro 14 after being kicked out of Super Rugby. What are your opinions on the South African teams? I mean, I'm going to make a video about that shortly on the channel. They finished sixth ahead of a Zebra in the, the competition last season. And their key player has got to be their wing, who I love watching, is Rabs McSwane. Fantastic player. He's one of the hottest outside backs doing last season in 2018-19. And up until the match against Leinster on the 1st of March, he had scored 13 tries in the league for the Cheetahs. He's one of the handful of Cheetahs players the Springbok coach, uh, Rassi, is monitoring closely. He's one of the team's stars this year in the Pro 14 and with 14 tries, he was the leading try scorer in the league. So if he gets ball in hand, if he gets on the front foot and he's running at you, he's going to score tries. Lots of teams don't particularly like travelling all the way to South Africa and facing the South African sides. So maybe they could make their stadium a little bit of a fortress. But how do I think they're going to do this season? Well, I can't really see them managing to get into the playoffs. I think it's going to be a really tough season for them once again. But guys, let me know in the comments down below, how do you think the Cheetahs are going to get on? Let's move on to the final team. It's Zebra. So finally, and certainly not least, is Zebra. So last season, they finished bottom of their conference with only three wins all season, which was a really tough season for them. And they just didn't look at the races. But will this year be different? So the key player for them is David Sisi, born in England but playing for Italy, the forward is a born leader in my opinion and over the past two seasons he has played nearly 50 games for the club since joining from Bath. He's going to the Rugby World Cup with Italy so when he gets back his leadership qualities will be key if this Zebra side are going to have an effect on the league. But in all reality it's going to be a really tough season for them, they're in a conference with two outstanding teams in Leinster and Glasgow. The Ospreys aren't a bad side either, Ulster are on the rise as well. They're really going to be challenging the Cheetahs to not finish bottom, if we're being completely honest. But who knows, they could surprise us, they could do a Treviso, which they'll really improve. But if you look at the amount of Treviso players in the Italy squad, compared to Zebra, there's just really no comparison. But that could work for Zebra, where they'll have more time with the players in pre-season and also time to gel. And hopefully they can pick up some wins against sides who will be missing their international players at the start of the season. But unfortunately, Zebra fans, you're going to be finishing bottom. So there you go, that's my preview for the Pro 14 for Conference A at least. Conference B will be out very shortly on the channel. So make sure to subscribe for that, leave a like on the video and comment your thoughts down below. Of course we're in the middle of the Rugby World Cup, so loads of videos going out on the channel. Previews, reviews, my thoughts, getting guests on the channel. So be sure to subscribe as well for that. Thank you very much for watching, it's so much appreciated. And I'll see you again here on Bish Rugby very soon.